We were gonna hang out on a Wednesday at like one o'clock, and I think it's about ten to one. And I open up. I'm gonna go wait for Jordan. I'm gonna watch for him by the window. And I open up the window, and I see a little kitten in my yard. A little kitten. Like I've said this before. That I, I don't. I'm not. And I've had cats, but I'm not a fucking expert. And the one thing I'll say is I don't know. And I, I, this applies to babies, like real humans. I don't know how to gauge like size to length of life. Like I can't look at a baby and say, "Oh, that's fucking four months old." I, I can't do that with a kid. But if I were to take a guess, that cat was less than a month old. And I'm like, "This is fucked up." So I put my shoes on and shit, and I look outside. I, I open the door because I'm gonna like go outside and like be like have a normal reaction to kittens. I'm going to be like, oh, uh, kitten, I want to pet you, and stuff like that. So I, I go outside, and by the time by the time I get outside, but like after I open the door, I put my shoes on, by the time I actually step outside into the front yard, there's two more in the yard. So there's three kittens all together. Two white ones, and one kind of a like black and brown mixture. And I'm like, holy shit, where these cats come from? And I, as I approach them, they scatter. They go to, like, my backyard area. And that's when Jordan pulls up. And uh, I'm telling Jordan, I'm like, hey, man, do you, do you fucking... Uh, I explain what just happened. Do you want do you want to get around these cats up and take them to Humane Society? Like, you don't have to. I just... I asked him first, I didn't make the assumption, and he was like, yeah, if you, you want to do it, uh, hydrogen chloride. So, I don't have any fucking hydrogen chloride. Uh, no fun ingredients. So, he's like, yeah, he's down to do it, so we go find the kittens. We find two of them are chilling by the side door, and the third one, I don't fucking remember where it was, but... Bottom line is, we ended up get rounding the two white ones. Like, there's a lot, there's a big story in just gathering these fuckers together, but we ended up rounding, I'm gonna skip all that. We got two of the white ones. I don't know where the third one went to this day, but it's fucking gone. I don't know, it's, you know, it's probably dead, but I like to think maybe somebody else found it and took it in or something. Uh, chloride, chloride. I still don't have chloride. I picked up two ingredients and chloride wasn't one of them. Where the fuck's the chloride? I just wanna pick up some chloride so I can keep talking this shit. I'm missing. Uh, from the truck here. There's a bunch of chloride in this truck. So we gather those two cats, and we're like, fuck it, let's go. Fuck the third one. We can't find this third one. Let's just get out of here. Take these cats. I'm down. Cloak and gummy. So we, we got these two cats in a box, hey, hey. a cardboard box, and we start. We we get in. We're about to get in this car. And as we get in the car, one of the little fuckers jumps out of the box. Oh my god! And I was holding the box. I mean, like I take blame for that part. But I'm fucking. Come on, wolf here. No, fucking wolf. Chains will get you. Get me chains, get me now. Here we go. So, it jumps out. And I'm in shotgun. And he's at, he's already, like, on the floor, on, like, the driver's side already. Fuck. Oh. Chains can still save us. No. So, no? no Is he dead? No I can't see him. He ran away. He's on the other side of the map. Come on, Chains. Come on, Chains. <laughs> Come on, Chains. What's he doing over there? What are you doing, Chains? God's sake. Muriatic acid. Do you want to run this shit again? Or... Sure. Alright. I made some progress. Well, I'll finish this dumb fucking story. At, at, at my snail pace, yeah. So one of them jumps out and it goes toward, it goes on the ground, of course, inside the car. 
and it runs towards where the Jordan's feet are in the driver's side floor area, the floor mats and stuff. And an immediate, Jordan reaches for it, but it hissed at him, so he was like, fuck this, I don't want to touch that cat. So we, we get out of the car, and I go around to the driver's side, and I'm going to like try to get this cat. So what happens is the cat in the driver's side on the floor area, it, it kind of crawled its way like behind the pedals. Hood, and uh, there's like an opening from where the pedals go from like, the mechanisms of the vehicle to the driver. There's like an opening in that area. And it was hanging in there. There's like a hole. He was hanging into that hole, but he wasn't in the hole yet. He kind of had his front two paws hooked on the opening. And I tried to grab him. And I didn't want to hurt him. Like it's a little cat and it's soft and it's fucking like... I didn't want to break its ribs by grabbing too hard, so I was trying to like hold on to them in a in a non life threatening manner. But those little fuckers are squirmish, man. Like they, it just squeezed its way out of my reach and it crawled up into the vehicle through that hole. <laughs> and that's when like that's when the whole process began of us trying. Like we would fall. We'd phone, like, uh, Winnipeg Humane Society or their emergency de- uh, dispatch it. And they would tell us, like, well, try this, try that. You know, we did, we would fucking, we did things from, like, uh, putting the other cat close to the vehicle, hoping that maybe uh, the ones, like, hiding would smell it and come out for it. We, uh, we would rev the engine. We would uh, honk the horn. Uh, at some, most of the time the cat was visible, like, through some way we could wiggle our way in, like, in the, under the driver's, under the steering wheel, and we could, like, uh, we could just find some way to see it, but just squeezing our hands through all the different, like, all the different stuff in there was hard to reach it, and every time we could reach it, it would just go further and further away, further in. I mean, we fucking, like, I took cat food, and I would, like, put it by there, and the only thing that had an immediate response, I think it's a muriatic acid. Yeah. No, we did not. No, it's not muriatic. I hear that tea kettle sound. Maybe that's what we needed to move on. I wasn't doing it on purpose. I thought he said muriatic acid. Then again, my focus isn't exactly at its uh, peak right now. Uh... Like, we tried all sorts of fucking things. Like, like, and this a response? Uh, I would load up YouTube on my phone, and I would play the sound of kittens. Yeah, like, kittens calling or whatever. And, uh, what the fuck? That thing blew up. Where's the van? Uh, well, the van doesn't show like, up for uh, another ten minutes. Oh, uh, fuck. Alright, somebody want to go in the basement? Yeah, we gotta hit some basement. All right, so you know, whenever you would hear those cats on YouTube, they would call, and then that's how we knew it was still there, or maybe it hadn't run, it hadn't snuck out, or we knew we could kind of like use sound to kind of locate it, or if we had, if we didn't know where it was, but most of the time we knew where it was, and like, okay, Jordan showed up about one o'clock, maybe one thirty. My details aren't one hundred percent right now, but he showed up. And it was in there for like four hours. Wow. Like we thought that we would take these fucking cats to Humane Society and leave and go have lunch within like 30 minutes with an hour being like the worst case scenario. That's what I kind of thought. But when that fucking cat, man, it jumped out. All because Jordan didn't grab it when it jumped out. I mean, like, I, no, I mean, like, I was holding the box. I could have been more secure with them. And... Eventually, what did get out, this is fucking stupid. Like, my mom came home from work, and I told her what was going on. And then, like, later, my dad got home from work, and I told him what's going on. And they, start, they started trying to help. Because there had been a point where me and Jordan had kind of given up in the sense of, like, like, the brute force of just us reaching for it, we had kind of gotten to a point where it was like, we can't do anything but wait. Because one of the things that happened was, 
all the times I was phoning Humane Society or their emergency dispatch, I finally called them like the fourth or fifth time, and I, I said like, I've tried everything you guys can, you guys have told me to try. I've done every trick you guys have suggested, and nothing's happened. Could you? And fuck the, the audacity I had to to say this. Uh, could you please dispatch somebody to to help us out? And the lady said, "Okay, well, can I get your information? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give your information to one of our one of our drivers, and she'll call you." So I gave her all my information, and then a few minutes later, she called me, and what she fucking said to me it had me speechless on the phone. And part of this, I can imagine, like I get it, but most of it fucking blew me away. She said. We're all like volunteers, what we do, and none of us are really experts. And she says, if you couldn't pull off or execute any of the things we told you to try, then odds are we can't either. <laughs> and that was the end of like their advice. That feels like me at work. I'm like, if somebody asks me a question, like, do you know where this is? And I'm like, you know what? I, I know as much as you know. <laughs> that's what I that's what I say in my head. Like, I, I really don't know. But I mean, I was like, like, I got that they were mostly volunteers, like in the, the humane, you know, service. But I mean, like, what the fuck do you like, do if, I'd just, like... I'd just be like, how do I kill this thing and get it out? That's, that's the part I'd be like, like, how easy it, can I just, like, smoke it out, or... Well, it's crazy that it wasn't even attached, like, uh... The way I understand it is with modern vehicles or whatever, on vans here, so... Uh, do you want to wait for the wave to end? Yeah, let's do no? that. No? Okay. Let's have an easy escape. Modern vehicles, they don't they don't have any uh, attachment from, like... Like, the, the part that you could enter the... If you're inside, like, the, the vehicle, like, where the seats are and stuff like that, there is no... Con there's no direct connection from that part of the vehicle to like where the the engines are, the engine and the radiator and fucking all that shit that I don't know about cars is. You can get inside parts of like behind, in the, the catch was in the dash. And if you're in the dash area, there's no connecting like lines to uh, the other stuff. So that cat was not gonna, or at least I don't think, I, I don't believe was gonna get sucked into any kind of tubing that would cause further harm. It was just a nuisance, and at the time, even then, we didn't know that at the time. We still didn't like running the vehicle with the cat in there. I don't blame Jordan for that, and I wouldn't want to either. But what eventually worked, because we did get this fucker out, and this is the part that I, I fucking... This is another part that kind of pulls me back. Not as not as much as the, the shitty service at Humane Society, but... uh. My dad got it out. My dad is shorter than me, has a small back. He's probably got smaller fingers, unless you count, like, width. His, he's got, like, sausage fingers or wide fingers. But his, his fingers aren't as long. His arms aren't as long. I mean, like, I don't know how he did, but he contorted his body in such a way that he fit underneath there, underneath the steering wheel area where me and Jordan went. He got his arms all the way through all the different uh, mechanisms, and he reached that fucking cat, and he pulled that little shit out. And, like, me and Jordan had been trying that. Like, the only reason my dad says he got the cat is because he asked Jordan to describe where the cat was, because Jordan knew exactly where that cat was. And he, he asked Jordan, he said, explain to me where it is. And Jordan explained, like, where the cat was. And once my dad knew, because he had tried before and failed just like all of us, but once my dad knew where it was, he just fucking reached for it and pulled it out. And it was as simple as that. <laughs> <laughs> and what's more fucked up is that this was, like, hours of that cat going further in. Like, from the moment this whole thing started where it jumped out of the box, we should have been able to get it right there. Even after an hour, we should have been able to get it. After two hours, we should have been able to pull it out. It was 
fucking deep in there and I still can't imagine how my dad pulled it out. And we ended up not taking the Humane Society. Because my mom was home and my dad was home. My mom had... My, I, no. Uh, presumably my mom phoned, or maybe she, she mentioned it on Facebook or something. Somehow my cousin got a hold of it, of the news. My cousin Melody, she has a... Uh, she has two little girls, and I think she's pregnant with a third child. And they were looking to take in a pet. So that night, they came in, and they picked up the two cats, and two cats have a home. Do you want to go to the van? Yep. See, this taser can tase me. Ah, uh, sorry. I killed him. So the last I heard about those cats was that... They're at their new home, and they go by Olaf and Flurry. Or Flurry and Olaf, however you choose to look at it. That's a long-winded explanation of a, a story that could have probably been simplified, but...